Today on Comic Storian, it's time to tell you how Hal Jordan became a Green Lantern again. This is the Comic Storian channel where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues. I break them down into a digestible bite before reading it back to you all dramatically. The purpose of this series is to show you what's going on in the world of comics, but allowing you to go buy these yourself by cutting out a lot of the fluff and B-plots. This allows you to put it into your collection and still get more out of it because we don't tell you everything that happened in the book. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be bringing you Green Lantern Rebirth, the beginning of Jeff John's Green Lantern mythos, the return of Hal Jordan. At this time, Kyle Rayner is the current active Green Lantern, and Hal Jordan is currently dead. He was defeated as the villain Parallax, and then his soul was bound to Spectre, and he became the spirit of vengeance. But that's not where Hal Jordan should be, and it's not the answers as to what actually happened to him as Parallax. So today is going to be the beginning. It is truly the start of Hal Jordan's journey in the Green Lantern mythos that was started at the early 2000s. So here you go. Let's get into this tale. Deep in the farthest reaches of space on an icy planet, Kyle Rayner finishes saving the citizens of the snowy world. Defeating a strange bug-like creature, he flies back down to the civilians as they crowd around him, reaching up to touch him. Their strange language escaping from their mouths but Kyle has no idea what they're saying. I wish I could understand what you're saying, he says to them, his ring suddenly chiming to Kyle's surprise. Translation complete. It says, and a moment passes as it records what the aliens are saying. Parallax is coming. The ring chimes. Back on Earth, Hal Jordan leans on the banister of a local air show, looking up at the planes flying overhead and dreaming of the past. And suddenly, one of those plane's engines begins to smoke and it falls out of the sky, bringing gasps of horror from the crowd. Hal turns, preparing to leap into action and help, but the specter within him begins to fight. This is not what we are here for. It is now! Hal snaps back, transforming into a green-cloaked figure leaping into the sky. Saving this man is a waste of time. The spirit of vengeance tries to explain to Hal, but as Hal grows massive, he reaches out, catching the plane, gently placing it on the ground. He would have been welcomed into God's kingdom, reunited with his father, the specter tells him. But with this done, they fly away. And as they drift over the city, the specter explains that they are there to seek vengeance on a drunk driver that hit and killed a young child. His rotten soul must be crushed like the boy's skull. That killer will taste the vengeance of the specter. The spirit tells Hal, but Hal fights back, and for a moment he appears as a Green Lantern once again as he tries to pull free of the Spectre. No, I won't be a part of your sick and demented justice. I won't cross that line, he shouts, but the Spectre reminds him that he seeks redemption for what he did is the great evil Parallax, and he must continue to work with the Spirit of Vengeance. He shows Hal visions of his time as Parallax, pulling him back inside of the Spectre's visage. This union is not for the good of us, Hal Jordan, but the universe itself. The Spectre intones. The spaceship comes screaming out of the sun, barreling towards the Earth. Meanwhile, over in New Mexico, two young men are backpacking near a restricted army base. And as they begin to climb the fence, the spaceship comes hurtling out of the sky, slamming hard into the Earth, sliding along it stopping right in front of them. What kind of plane is that? One of them says. And both of them climb the fence, moving quickly to the downed spacecraft as a strange green light is beckoning to them. Please, don't be afraid, Cal Rayner says to them, trying to pull his ring off, knowing that he can't use it, but it won't be removed. And he reaches for the young men, begging them to help him. Please, it has a name. He gasps before falling, his arm draped over the green coffin next to him. Meanwhile, over in Northern California, Carol Ferris pulls on what remains of Ferris Airfield, talking on the phone with her husband, explaining to him that she just wanted to visit the old field again. I grew up here, she reminds her husband, and she moves inside, her eyes widening as she recognizes one of the dusty old planes. She hangs up on her husband, using her hand to wipe away the dust and look at the pilot's name on the side. H. Jordan. Meanwhile, over in the Bronx, Guy Gardner and John Stewart land in the street attempting to attend a baseball game with Hal. But Guy is against the idea, not sure why John would want to reach out to Hal. I used to trust Hal. 
I always believed in him. John says, and they continue inside with John asking if Guy misses being a Green Lantern. Guy laughs, pointing out that he doesn't miss being in the Justice League and following Batman's orders. Batman hardly is calling the shots anymore. John explains to him, but Guy laughs again. Yeah, that's what he wants you to think, he says, as he begins to grow using the power that he now has as the warrior to make his muscles bulge. I'm a gardener and I'm the warrior. Screw the core. He says with a grin, and he returns to normal as they find their seats with both looking around for their friend. Hal Jordan's not even a human anymore. He died. He's a ghost, literally. Guy reminds John. You're right, Guy, Hal says as he walks through the crowd sitting next to them, and he looks up at John, telling his friend that it's been a long time since he's done anything normal, and he thanks him for the gesture. But only a few moments pass before the people begin to swarm around them, reaching out for Hal, confessing their sins. Guy's eyes suddenly go wide as he looks at Hal Jordan. I, I, I cheated on my taxes! Guy stammers, and Hal sighs, finally standing, apologizing to John. He won't even give me a break anymore. He tells his friend and disappears in a blink of the eye. Meanwhile, over at Star City, home of the Green Arrow, he readies his bow, looking at Maya, telling her that she needs to hurry up. You remind me of Dinah! Took her forever to put on those fishnets and blonde wig. He says with a laugh at his new partner, but an explosion takes out the wall, throwing them both to the floor. Where are you? I know you're here, you little. Black Hand says as he steps into the destruction, holding up a strange device that begins to click, leading him down into the arrow cave. And he holds it up, finding a hidden wall opening it. Yeah, there you are. Oh God, what a beautiful sight. He whispers as he reaches down, picking up Hal Jordan's old Green Lantern ring, but an arrow flies out of the darkness, piercing Black Hand's hand, pinning it to the wall. You picked the wrong house, Black Hand. Oliver snaps. Who? Maya asks, her bow ready, and he shrugs. What a lantern's old losers, kid, he says, and he turns in surprise as Hal Jordan is now in the cave. Hal, speak of the devil, Oliver says, but Hal shakes his head, stepping forward. I've been wanting to come see you. I just hoped it wouldn't be like this. He transforms into the Spectre before Green Arrow's eyes walking up to the Black Hand. The Spectre must deliver vengeance, he says, and an evil smile plays across his lips as he reaches out for the Black Hand. Oliver looks on in horror as the Spectre touches the hand pinned to the wall and it begins to wither and to die, falling off and burning on the floor, bringing screams of pain out of Black Hand. And Oliver points his bow at Hal. Don't move. He shouts, but Hal turns. His face is his own once again. It's getting harder to focus, Ollie. I, there's something wrong. None of this should be happening. This isn't who I am, he says as he disappears in green smoke. Maya rushes to Black Hand's side, trying to help the villain up who's going into shock, and Oliver reaches down, picking up the old Green Lantern ring. Hal gave me this ring a long time ago. He said, in case of emergency, break glass. I think the glass has been broken. That night at Guy's Warriors Bar in New York, he and Jon Stewart are sitting quietly, staring at all of the Green Lantern memorabilia that Guy has decorated the bar with. And the two of them continue to talk about the history of the Corps and Hal Jordan. About what happened when Hal became the villain known as Parallax, destroying the core, killing hundreds. But Guy suddenly begins to convulse, his beer falling and smashing on the ground, his muscles beginning to twist and expand, pulsing beneath his skin. Skin's on fire, John! Get out! Hurry! He growls as his skin becomes powerful weapons and lasers shoot out of his eyes and mouth, destroying the bar around them, throwing John away. Meanwhile, over in Northern California, a flight passes through the clouds, over what used to be Coastal City. The pilots look down, their eyes widening, and below them, where the crater of the city should have been, way back when it was destroyed. We actually see Coast City shining. Something has brought back the city. It was the destruction of this city that sent Hal Jordan down his spiral. The loss of everyone that he loved turned him into Parallax, one of the greatest villains in the DC universe. But now it has returned, just as Hal is trying to redeem himself. Over at the JLA Watchtower, Guy continues to scream in pain as Martian Manhunter stands over him. I'm going to shut down your pain centers, John says quietly. But Batman shakes his head, telling the Martian to knock Guy out. And out of the shadows steps Dr. Midnight. What do you see, Doctor? 
Batman asks, but Dr. Midnight informs the Dark Knight that Guy's body is rejecting itself. His very organs are fighting against him. Batman turns, getting on the comms to Wonder Woman and Power Girl, who are shifting through the destruction of Guy's bar with Alan, Scott, and Jade. Alan and Jade found something odd. Everything in the bar was destroyed save for one statue, Batman. A statue of Hal Jordan. Wonder Woman tells him, but Flash breaks through the comms, informing them of the reappearance of Coast City, and he's moving through it at super speed, pointing out that all of the roads, street signs, and stoplights are here. But there's only one building, he says, and the other heroes nod, all knowing what he's going to say. His address, Hal Jordan's old apartment building. You don't think Hal did this, do you, Batman? Yes, Flash, I do. And all of you shouldn't be surprised. He says, pointing back to his teammates, pointing out that Hal became the Spectre, and that could have been a part of a larger plan. If Hal could tame the spirit of vengeance, he'd become unstoppable. But it's John who steps forward. Enough! He holds up his ring, shining a green light on Batman, pointing out that Batman never liked Hal Jordan because he wasn't afraid. Hal was a man without fear, he says, but Oliver interrupts the argument, stepping into the watchtower, telling them what he saw tonight. This is strike three. Face facts, John. The real Hal Jordan is back, and he's bringing the past with him. Meanwhile, Carol Ferris is standing in the rain, looking at the new jets that have appeared on the repaired Ferris airfield. When suddenly the jet's canopies all open. Hello, Carol, Hal says to her from the shadows. Over in the desert, the young men are trying to help Kyle Rayner, but he keeps babbling to them. I have to show them all. I saw it, he gasps, but he slides down, passing out again, and the two men don't know what to do, but they continue to hear a voice echoing from the Green Lantern's ring. Parallax is coming. Back over at Ferris Airfield. It's good to see you, Carol. Hal says with a smile as he steps into the light, and she looks at him questioning how all of the rusted jets have suddenly become new. Did you do this? She asks him, and Hal nods, telling her that he learned something from his father's death long ago that sometimes you have to question authority. And that's what I have to do now. Something's been clouding my judgment, making me doubt the world and myself, making me afraid of my own actions, my own willpower. That's not me. He tells her and he steps forward, telling her that he needs to find a way back to who he was. Back on the Watchtower, Zatanna has been able to heal Hal Jordan's soul, using magic to track it and the specter. Superman nods. Keep your eyes on Guy Gardner, Jean. We're gonna go talk to Hal. And I'm hoping that will be enough, Superman says. But back on the airfield, Carol doesn't understand what Hal is telling her, reminding him that she is married and loves her life. He smiles as he pulls her into a hug, telling her that if anyone can make him settle down, it would have been her. The conversation is interrupted as Batman's voice echoes out in the rain. Jordan, what are you doing? He demands, and Hal is surprised. Talking to a friend, what's wrong? Do you need help, Batman? He asks, and Superman steps forward, pointing out that parts of Coast City have returned. And what is happening to Guy Gardner? Guy, is he all right? Hal asks, but it's Flash who finally asks. What did you do to him, Hal? What did you do to Coast City? He asks, and Hal's eyes flash green. I fixed this airfield for Carol, Wally. That's all I've done today, he says, and Batman steps forward. Back to fixing things, huh, Jordan? But John tells the Dark Knight to shut up, grabbing his head, feeling something. As he leaps into the air, his body covered in green light. Guy was right. I'm just a good soldier. But it's time to stand out again. John Stewart snaps, lightning flashing behind him as he turns the ring on the league, lashing out with a powerful blast. Superman moves quickly, suddenly next to Stewart. John, what are you doing? Stop this now. He says him, but John turns to him, lashing out, attacking with his eyes as two green points of energy. Hal Jordan turns, suddenly becoming the specter, prepared to attack John. But the spirit's voice echoes out of his mouth. We are the specter. This fight is not ours. Vengeance calls. Victims call out for justice. He bellows. Hal tries to fight against it, but the specter suddenly disappears in a puff of smoke. Flash continues to move quickly, avoiding the rapid fire of John's ring. Parallax is coming. Parallax is coming. The ring continues to ping. But back on the watchtower, Guy Gardner seems to be getting better when suddenly he begins to scream in rage and pain. Green Arrow points pointing out that Guy looks better, but suddenly looks down at the ring on his hand. Yow! It's getting hot, 
He snaps, and the ring begins to glow and float, suddenly beginning to duplicate itself. The new rings flying away quickly, forcing itself onto Guy Gardner's finger. There's a massive power surge as the room is bathed in green light. Parallax is coming. Parallax is coming. The ring pings as Guy suddenly stands. Once again, Green Lantern Guy Gardner. Oh yeah, he says with a grin. And John turns to him, sensing fear in him. Are you all right? The Martian Manhunter asks, averting his gaze from the green light, and Guy raises his fist, aiming the ring at the others. You know what, Johnny boy? He asks, and a blast of energy throws everyone to the ground as the light finally dims. Beware my power, he says with a smile. Meanwhile, out in the desert, the young men still don't know what a parallax is and why the ring keeps stating that. It's a warning. It has a name. Kyle Rayner says, sitting up, fire suddenly erupting all around them as he stands, pushing the young men back. Thanks for your help, but you need to get out of here. Kyle tells them, and they both turn and run, fear on their faces as an alien descends towards them. Come on, you poser. Let's make this easy. Kilowog snaps. Use the ring, Kyle, he says, but Kyle grits his teeth. No. He turns, running as Kilowog fires a blast of energy at him, and Kyle ducks behind the ship, avoiding the Green Lantern blast. Kilowog steps forward, aiming his ring at the green coffin, pushing the lid aside, looking down at the actual body of Hal Jordan. But the scene is suddenly bathed in a green light. Green Lantern of Sector 647. Kilowog, a Bolovax Vic, you will lower your ring and you will cease your actions immediately. The soul of Hal Jordan may reside within the Spectre, but the body of Hal Jordan is under the Guardian's protection. Ganthet tells him floating forward. Ganthet lands on the coffin, staring down at Kilowog as Kyle struggles to stand. Do not ignore my request, Kilowog. Lower your ring. Ganthet orders, but Kilowog refuses, readying himself, the air around them still and hot. Kilowog releasing his breath, firing a massive blast from his ring. And when the smoke clears, Ganthet stands unharmed. He merely raises his hand, creating the energy of willpower around them. Green constructs lashing out to trap his former soldier. Shrapnel begins to fly through the air, and Kyle is forced to raise his hand, creating a small shield with his ring to protect himself. And he can feel the power reaching into his soul as he tries to fight it, but the visions begin to appear in his mind. Guy Gardner is now leaving the Watchtower. Jon Stewart is battling the Justice League. He forces these visions out of his mind, gritting his teeth as he glares at his ring. Damn it, Jordan. You better be worth this, Kyle hisses. Meanwhile, outside of Coast City, Hal Jordan suddenly appears. Where have you brought me, Spectre? He asks sharply, his eyes widening as he sees the sign of Coast City and begins to walk the streets until he finally arrives outside of his old apartment. A green light beckons him from the windows of his former apartment, and he quietly makes his way inside, and there, in his old apartment, he finds a lantern waiting for him. Who did all of this? Who brought it all back? He wonders as he reaches down, picking up the lantern, staring into his own reflection in it. He's shocked to find Parallax staring back at him, the evil, bug-like villain. You did it, Jordan. We did it, the villain says with a sneer. Back over with Ganthet, he continues to hold Kilowog at bay, pushing the green lantern aside as Kyle crawls to the coffin. Hal Jordan's body seems to be unharmed. The residual energy he held as Parallax preserved it as we believed it might. The Guardian tells his follower, and Kyle nods, telling Ganthet that he needs to get to the League. Ganthet nods, telling Kyle that the ring can't trick him with fear as it did with the others. Willpower is our only weapon, Kyle. Kyle flies away as Ganthet turns back to the roaring Kilowog, holding him still. Kyle Rayner appears at the Watchtower with Hal's body, shocked by the destruction that he is finding left by Guy Gardner. What happened? He gasps, but a voice calls out to him from the rubble. Guy Gardner happened, kid. Where you been? We've been trying to get you on the horn, Oliver says as he pulls himself up, his eyes widening as he sees the body of his former friend. What the hell is even going on? He demands, and Kyle nods and sighs. I think you better sit down, Oliver. He says quietly. In his old apartment, Hal Jordan tries to throw away the lantern as Parallax appears before him again. 
I am a part of you, Jordan. I will fulfill your greatest desires, and you will stop fighting against this union once and for all. I can give it all back to you, Coast City, your core, even Carol. Parallax tells him an evil smile on his face, but Hal Jordan continues to struggle. The specter appears next to him, the two forces within Hal's soul beginning to fight back and forth, green energy swirling around them. You must see the truth, Hal Jordan. You must help me fight it. The truth about Parallax. The truth about yourself. The specter warns back over at the watchtower, though. Kyle begins to explain things to Oliver, that they went into space because he felt like he didn't belong on Earth. And there, in the darkest reaches, he found a civilization that warned him of something, that the universe was about to end at the hand of Parallax. Kyle didn't understand this at first, believing that they had defeated Hal Jordan as Parallax, but the aliens spoke of a creature that was born at the beginning of sentience, a yellow entity that was made of living fear, that created terror and would destroy whole planets with paranoia. When fear threatened to destroy the entire universe, it was trapped in the central battery by the Guardians. The monster was imprisoned within the battery, thus creating the impurity and weakness to yellow that all of the lanterns had dealt with. It was this creature that would eventually take hold of Hal Jordan, warping his sense of right and wrong, changing him and grafting itself to Hal Jordan's soul. Parallax wasn't Hal Jordan. Parallax was a creature of evil and fear. Wait, so this creature is still linked to Hal Jordan's soul? So that makes it a part of the specter now? Oliver finally asks as Kyle reaches the end of the story. Yeah. Evil finally escaped Jordan's sight and it hid inside of him. All of these visions were also shown to Hal Jordan by the spirit of vengeance. So now Hal Jordan knows what Parallax actually was this whole time. And you still serve as the host of Parallax. Spectre tells him, but Jordan shakes his head, sure that he would have known that this was happening, and he wouldn't have had the power to stop himself. But Spectre explains that he did not bond with Jordan without reason. I hoped by binding your infected being that I would be able to burn out this parallax like a disease, to cast vengeance upon it. Spectre explains, but Hal begins to writhe, his hands rising to claw the flesh from his face, ripping apart his own skin like a mask to reveal parallax beneath. But I am too powerful for even you, Spectre. You're mine, Hal Jordan, my puppet. And now the Spectre as well. Parallax lives! The monsters snarl. And back on the watchtower, Oliver is still processing everything, but he finally turns back to Kyle, questioning who woke up the dormant Parallax so that it could latch itself to Hal. But his words are interrupted as yellow arrows fly through the air, stabbing it into his skin. Who woke it up? Who could? Who would? A voice calls out of the destroyed remains of the watchtower. Who else? Sinestro says with a sneer, a yellow arrow appearing before him. Sinestro looks down at them both, his arms crossed over his chest, his gaze falling to Kyle. Kyle Rayner, you should have let it burn out. He says simply, the yellow energy suddenly flying out of his ring, sending hundreds of yellow arrows at the two heroes. Kyle throws up his shield, but the energy is too much and it shatters. You'd be amazed at the constructs that Parallax is capable of. I tortured Jordan with many of them. My death at his hands was the final stage of his susceptibility to impurity. Sinestro says, easily blocking Kyle's green sword construct with his own yellow sword as he fires another arrow, this one stabbing through Kyle's hand. Sinestro steps forward, standing over Oliver. Green Arrow, the fool's friend. You wear his colors, the color of willpower, and I despise it. He says, creating a yellow skeleton hand to slam Oliver into the wall. Oliver struggles as the hand now begins to crush him. Kyle, don't let him get near Hal! Oliver gasps, but Sinestro's yellow energy surges through the room, knocking Kyle away as he stalks towards the coffin. Meanwhile, Parallax now stands in Hal Jordan's old apartment, the souls of Hal and the Spectre swirling around him. Spectre, your cries of vengeance against me fade, but Hal Jordan's soul no longer poses a threat. Keeping him content no longer concerns me. The charade, the charades are over. Parallax says green energy filling the room and the apartment building getting destroyed in a massive explosion. When the smoke clears, only Parallax remains as he looks up as Kilowog flies through the air, slamming into the ground next to him. Guardian! 
Parallax sneers as Ganthet floats down as well, still surrounded by the energy of willpower. Kilowog is free of your influence. Even the power of the Spectre is dwarfed by the Guardians. The memories that you stole from me are mine again. Your reprieve from Oa nears its end. Ganthet tells him simply, but Parallax chuckles. <laughs> Lies! You forgot nothing! You allowed this to happen! Cause without evil in the universe, you have no reason to exist! <laughs> Guy Gardner and Jon Stewart suddenly fly out of the sky, barreling towards Ganthet, yellow fire in their eyes. You put fear into my points of light. The Guardian notes, but he holds out his hand, green energy swirling out and wrapping around them, expelling the yellow influence out of their bodies. Guy Gardner shakes his head, unsure of where he is, but both he and John are surprised by his own Green Lantern uniform. They both land near Kilowog, making sure their comrade is okay. Not so loud. Head's still ringing. He grunts, and the three lanterns gather themselves, flying up to stand with Ganthet. You have made many enemies in Sector 2814. They gather. The Guardian intones to Parallax, but the monster is unimpressed. You think I cannot handle three of your core members? He asks, but Ganthet motions over his shoulder, noting that he did not mean the core. And Parallax turns as the members of the Justice League appear, flying towards him and into battle. I speak of them, Ganthet says simply. Meanwhile, out in space, Sinestro throws Kyle through another room, yellow energy blasting him, as the villain notes that Kyle was never meant to be a Green Lantern. Maybe, but I'm still a Green Lantern. Kyle snaps as he lashes out, slamming Sinestro into a piece of machinery. Meanwhile, Oliver is crawling towards the fallen Green Lantern battery, Hal's old ring on his finger. Arrows aren't gonna do much, but this might. He gasps as he puts the ring against the battery. And the brightest day and the blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who... who... crap. How the rest of this go? He struggles, but the lantern suddenly lights up, bathing him in green light. Sinestro, meanwhile, slams Kyle into the ground, pinning him with yellow clamps. Don't think I cannot hear you, Green Arrow. You're wasting your time. He calls over his shoulder, but Oliver is standing in the doorway, ordering the villain to leave Kyle alone. Oliver is wounded, but he raises his hand, aiming the ring at Sinestro, struggling, a cry of pain escaping his lips as an arrow appears out of the ring, slamming into Sinestro, staggering. Is that all you have, Earthman? Is that all your pitiful will can accomplish? Sinestro asks with a sneer as he raises his ring, yellow energy lashing out, but Kyle is there grabbing Oliver and dragging him away. I owe you one, Green Arrow gasps. Meanwhile, the League is struggling against Parallax, with many of its members having already fallen. Alan Scott flies up, trying to use his mystical ring against the monster, but Parallax suddenly begins to writhe, his skin ripping away as Hal Jordan is pulling himself away. No! I'm not finished! I'm not through! Damn it, Spectre, fight! Do you want to help me or not? Fight! He shouts, and the other heroes are shocked, as Ganthet merely watches, unsurprised. Parallax chose the wrong soul to corrupt. He says, and the three souls struggle in their battle until the specter bellows in rage, ripping Parallax out of Hal Jordan. The other heroes are shocked by the image of the yellow monster, a being of pure terror. We did it. Now destroy Parallax. Hal's soul shouts at the specter, but the specter looks at him, telling him that he has already interfered enough. A new host will be born for him soon. And in a flash of holy light, the spirit of vengeance disappears. Hal is shocked, turning to see Parallax moving towards Ganthet, the monster rushing forward, latching its fearful impurity to the mighty being. Did we just get ditched by the specter? Guy Gardner asks, and everyone is still in shock. Hal looks up as a light appears before him, calling him home. He begins to float upward, unable to stop himself. But even Ganthet tries to fight against the influences of Parallax, holding out his hand. Hal Jordan, follow my light. He says, creating a ball of energy that floats before Hal. Hal moves into the tunnel of light, and that's where he sees Abin Sur. He sees his father, and they are beckoning him forward, beckoning him to cross the threshold. But the green ball of energy peels away, and Hal begins to ponder for a moment before following it. Meanwhile, back at the watchtower, another blast of energy throws Kyle and Oliver through a wall, with Sinestro stepping through the rubble, looking down at them. Beg. Beg for your lives and I will end them quickly. But the ring in Oliver's hand begins to glow when he holds it up and it pulls away, zipping across the room, flying to the coffin, putting itself on Hal Jordan's hand and he can feel his body aching once more, his eyes opening. 
as he is now revived from the dead. In a blast of green light, Hal Jordan stands, and he can fill his willpower. The will to fight. The will to live. Sinestro shields his eyes, but he is forced to look. Sinestro, get the hell away from them. Hal Jordan orders. Sinestro looks at Hal in fear for a moment, but quickly raises his ring, firing. The wall exploding outwards, and Hal bounces across the moon. He finally stops getting to his feet, blood leaking out of his nose, and he smiles. Damn, that felt good. He thinks to himself, leaping into the air as Sinestro comes screaming at him, grabbing him by the throat. But Hal breaks away and the two of them fly through space, trading blows from their energy rings. Hal manages to get Sinestro into a headlock, blasting him hard with energy and flying after him. The oath abandoned me! You all did! Sinestro shouts at him and he peppers Hal with more energy blasts. But Hal throws up the ring, sending out his own small shields to block the blasts. The two of them go back and forth with Sinestro laughing at how Hal was corrupted. I made you a murderer, Hal Jordan, Sinestro says with a smile. The two are now by Saturn, with Hal giving chase through the rings of Saturn. Sinestro button-hooking onto him, firing another blast that rips through the space debris. Hal Jordan fires another shot back, but they both go wide and miss the villain. Your mind is like a muscle unused for years. You forgot how to use the power ring. I can see it, Jordan. <laughs> he begins to taunt the hero, telling him that Parallax will consume his world. And then I'll finish with Kyle Rayner. I will slice the creature's chest open and rip out his useless heart. Sinestro sneers, but Hal refuses, as he knows that Kyle held the torch of the Green Lanterns and no one else did. You will respect him. He shouts, and Sinestro's eyes go wide as the green arrows slam into his back. Damn right, green arrow says I. Kyle says as he appears behind Sinestro, and the two lanterns stand together using their rings to pin Sinestro to the ground, but he manages to break free, rushing Jordan once again. Hal moves to meet him, the energy of the rings slamming into each other. It is at that moment that Sinestro's ring begins to crack, and the villain begins to turn to dust, fleeing from our universe as he smiles at Jordan, a laugh in his voice. Jordan, <laughs> welcome back. He calls before disappearing completely, and Kyle looks shot, wondering if Sinestro is really dead. Hal shakes his head, his ring confirming that Sinestro has fled back to the antimatter universe. Tracking him will be impossible. The bastard's still laughing. He finally turns to Kyle, holding out his hand. Can't worry about that now. Let's do this right. Hal Jordan. He says by the way of an introduction, and Kyle smiles, offering to shake his hand, telling Jordan that he only wanted to help. He tells Hal that Oliver is all right, and that the other members of the League on the Watchtower are now awake. I made sure they were all right before I followed your trail. And Hal nods. All right then. Come on, Kyle. Duty calls. Kyle stops him. I'm not like the other lanterns, Jordan. He tells Hal that he isn't the guy who had to overcome great fear. And Hal looks at him with a small smile. Fighting from one end of the universe to the other, risking your life to help someone who everyone else wrote off, facing Sinestro one-on-one -on -one and living to talk about it? What do you think you've been doing, Kyle? Hiding under your drawing board? He asks before flying back towards Earth, and Kyle stops and thinks about it for a moment before following. And the remains of the coastal city, Ganthet has failed. His body and mind are now twisted by parallax. It is over, Guardian. Your power is mine. Fear will spread throughout your precious sectors. My light, my color. I am ever so hungry. The monster roars, and the three lanterns don't know what to do, believing they are out of options. I'm sure we can think of something, Kilowog. Polish off your rings and stand together. Hal says as he and Kyle landed nearby, the three shocked to see Hal Jordan, but he promises to explain later. Light him up. Then listen for fear. Remember fear and you can shake off parallax. What's the plan? Kyle asks. We'll figure it out on the way up, he says, with a battering flying through the air wrapping around Hal's hand. As long as I'm standing, you're not doing anything. Batman growls, the league behind him. I want an explanation, Jordan. Batman growls, but Hal raises an eyebrow at his old teammate. The green glowing for a moment, burning the battering cord off his wrist. Figure it out, Batman. He says, and simply turns it back to Parallax, looking to his friends, telling them that Parallax has already begun to infect everyone with fear, that he can see it in the world. But a hand reaches out, grabbing him on the shoulder. We're not done. But Hal whirls around, punching Batman in the face, knocking him to the ground. Let's go, Lanterns. 
Hal says, and the five lanterns leap into the air, flying towards Parallax. Batman gets back to his feet, telling the others that they need to face Parallax, but a green flame suddenly surrounds the heroes, and the League looks up to see Alan Scott and Jade floating above them. Hal knows what he's doing. Let the core handle this one. As the lanterns barrel forward, Hal Jordan comes up with a plan, explaining to the other lanterns that they can open up the connection to the central battery and they can send Parallax back inside. It's gonna be like putting a tornado back in a beer bottle. Guy notes, Don't sound too hard. Killua grunts. Parallax bellows at them and the lanterns hit him hard, John creating constructs to hold him down while Guy barrels forward, slicing through his skin with a buzzsaw. Kilowog hits him with a beam of energy while Kyle stretches something to pry open Parallax's mouth and hold it there. The five lanterns converge, shooting powerful energy into Parallax so that they can say the oath, creating a bond between them. And the brightest day and the blackest night, no evil shall escape our sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. They shout and Parallax roars at them, weakened by the assault. I will not be imprisoned again, not by you! He shouts with yellow liquid leaking out of Ganthet's mouth and yellow tendrils lashing out, stabbing into the lanterns, throwing them all away. All that remains is Hal Jordan as he flies in front of the monster, blasting him with his ring. Give up! You failed once, Jordan! You will fail again! Parallax roars, a yellow tendril snaking out, trying to get to him. Give up, damn you! Parallax bellows, but Hal grits his teeth. I don't know how. He snaps, putting more power into the ring, staggering Parallax. The other lanterns rally, hitting the monster with everything that they've got. Enjoy your ride home, pal. I did. Hal snaps as their energy blasts Parallax apart, revealing the form of Ganthet once more. The lanterns using their rings to draw in Parallax's power, sending it to Oa to swirl once more in the central battery. The rest of the Guardians look on as the battery flares to life. Brothers and sisters, it is time. The head Guardian whispers, and on Earth, the lanterns rush to the body of Ganthet. But the Guardian glows green and disappears. You have all done well. He tells them before disappearing, and the lanterns begin to celebrate, but Hal turns to Batman as he stalks towards him. Do you expect me to believe this? I don't expect you to believe anything, and honestly, I don't care. Hal tells him, and the two heroes stare at each other down for a moment, before Batman finally turns away. I suppose the universe needs more light anyway. Batman says, and Hal seems surprised, looking at John. He's right, isn't he? Hal asks, and John sighs. Yeah. He usually is. Time passes, and Hal travels to Star City, the home of the Green Arrow, and the two old friends walk down the steps into the Arrow Cave. It's here somewhere. So after all of this, what's next? Oliver asks his friend as he pulls out the green duffel bag. Hal sighs, telling his friend that he's going to start living life again. Oliver nods and pulls out the battery, holding it to Hal Jordan. You know, I still can't remember that damn oath. He says with a bruised smile. And Hal just smiles as he places the ring against the lantern, his costume burning around him. I'll never forget it. And this is the beginning of a journey into the entire Green Lantern mythos, one of my favorite things ever in comics. So I hope you guys are excited about this and make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as the current plan is to bring this to you most Wednesdays, a Green Lantern Wednesday. And don't forget, if you want early access to all of these videos, join us at Patreon. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time right here at Comic Story.